Hello and welcome to Economics at CRGS. I hope in the next few minutes you will get a better idea and a, a taste for what economics is, is really about. It is such an interesting and applied subject and there is a lot more to it than probably you already imagine. When you ask a typical 15 to 17 year old about what they think economics is about, these are some of the words that are mentioned and obviously the big one, money, is the most common one. Whilst all these terms are relevant to the subject, they really do not convey how broad and how deep the subject is in relation to your everyday life. It is not just about the Chancellor of the Exchequer or the Governor of the Bank of England, um, men in suits as some people often describe them. There is so much of everyday life that you will learn about. We will learn skills on how to challenge things, how to be a better consumer and how to actually make better decisions in your life. You may be looking at this purely as just a qualification, but out of this qualification you will gain so much more. So what other things are involved in economics? If we look at economics on a global landscape, these are just a few of the issues that we will have a bit of a deep dive into and look at on, on a global scale. For example, did you realise that economics is also about studying the importance of diet and how that is having an impact on government finances and managing the NHS. The costs of the NHS are significantly affected by diet related illnesses. So what can we do about that? What can the government do about that? We introduced a sugar tax for carbonated soft drinks. Is that working? Is that an effective way of dealing with the problem? In Scotland, a minimum price on alcohol has been introduced. Only in Scotland. Why not in England? Why not in Wales? Why not in Northern Ireland? Is it being successful? Will it have an impact on alcohol consumption and the costs related to the NHS? Education. Why do we have state-provided education in the UK and yet some countries provide education purely in the private sector? What would the UK be like if you had to pay for your education from primary school, if all we had was private sector provision? We will look at the problems with that and why the government provides a state education in this country as well as a national health service. Climate change. Did you realise that in the last 25 years, almost half of the corals on the Great Barrier Reef have died? Why is this happening? Now in science, you will look at the reasons behind that. In economics, we will look at how can we change consumer behaviour? Why is this happening? As economies develop, we become more focused on our self-interest. But we are wasting so many resources. The reason why economics exists is because we have unlimited wants, yet the resources on the planet are finite. And as time goes by, they're just going to keep running out and more people are just going to keep wanting and wanting. How do we incentivize people to stop wasting? How do we incentivize people to change consumer behaviour? We will look at the kind of things that the government has done, is doing, but could do better. Poverty and inequality, so much heightened by lockdown and the COVID pandemic. Why did it take Marcus Rashford to start the hashtag, make the U-turn, and get the government to fund free school meals during the school holidays after lockdown? Why do we have provisions for free school meals? Does it work? What could we do better? Why do we need a welfare system? Why did Rishi Sunak introduce the furlough scheme during lockdown? Again, has it worked? Could it have been done better? But most of all, why is it coming to an end? Because we've got finite resources and we have to prioritise our decisions. 
So what kind of things can be introduced in the future to try and level up, whether it's regional inequality or income inequality or wealth inequality? The environment. Do you realise that countries like Sweden have had over half of their energy provided through renewable energy sources um, since 2015? The UK has got a very ambitious target of trying to get to 50% of our energy coming from re renewable sources by 2025. Why is Sweden being so much better than the UK? Why do we need to be extracting energy from renewable sources? Remember what I've just said previously. Economics is about trying to prioritise because we've got unlimited wants and finite resources. But if we can harness our energy from renewable sources, from infinite supplies of wind and solar power, then we can minimise the economic problem. We will investigate lots of these issues. So that's just a little bit about the content. I hope you can see that it's much, much broader than possibly you may think. A little bit about the delivery of the course. Um, at CRGS, you are likely to have two teachers. Um, you might just have one teacher. And the course, like any A-level, is linear and is delivered over the course of two years. Every topic that is given and delivered has a handout like this. These handouts are unique to Clitheroe Royal Grammar School. They have been written by the department. This is a typical handout that would be covered, and this one is about the gender pay gap and why some people are paid more than others. Why is a premiership footballer paid a lot more than a consultant surgeon? We will investigate the issues of demand and supply and the value those people add to society. These resources are placed on Microsoft Teams, so they are accessible remotely so that you can upload work, you can answer online and you can post any questions that you have if we do have to work remotely because of course we are living in new normal times. Um, overall, Students are your key resource in terms of finding out what is actually happening in economics. It's a good idea to ask students that are currently on the course. There are, I know that there are interviews that are going to appear as part of our open evening. I've also arranged for some previous students to record what they found the most exciting about A-level economics and why they actually took it. I won't say exactly what they've said, but what I want to be very, very specific on is a lot of people think taking economics is about going into a financial career, or it's going into being an accountant, or working something with, with mathematics. It's so much more than that. Even if you're doing a medical degree, there'll be an economics component. Economics is part of our everyday life. We make decisions subliminally most of the time, but we're using economics. We prioritise our choices. We need to be better consumers. We need to be better informed. We need to change our behaviour. We study that in economics. So when you take economics, I hope you would find it interesting. I hope you'd also find it challenging, but also very applicable to today's society. And in terms of results, we have at the moment 108 students taking economics across both year 12 and year 13. And when you find a subject interesting, you tend to work harder at it. So it's not surprising that our results have been excellent over the course of the last few years. And our last exam sitting, which of course wasn't in 2020, uh, our last exam, exam sitting was in 2019 and this was the proportion of students that got an A star to an A grade. So I hope you found that interesting, it's helped in terms of widening your understanding of A-level economics. If you are interested then I really look forward to seeing you next year. Until then, stay safe, take care.